It's been nearly three months since George Floyd was killed. His death, seen around the world, sparked outrage, led to protests. But it also forced us to have conversations about changes that are needed, especially with law enforcement and their relationships within the communities that they serve. Some of the protesters say it doesn't help that many law enforcement look like military more than they are public defenders. Things like this, a military mine-resistant vehicle, or MRAP. These machines are built to withstand explosive device attacks or ambushes, but you can see them rolling around your neighborhood. Town Investigates Jennifer Titus is uncovering tonight why some Bay Area law enforcement agencies have received millions of dollars of used military equipment. A badge, a gun, typical inventory for law enforcement. 180 uh, sworn deputies on the law enforcement side. That's Highlands County Sheriff Paul Blackman. I'm just completing my first term. We sat down with him for a Zoom interview. What have you guys gotten? To discuss his inventory that some would say isn't typical for law enforcement. Do you have two MRAPs? We do. We have an MRAP and then we have one that's called a UTV. An MRAP, also known as a mine resistant vehicle, is built to withstand improvised explosive devices and ambushes on the battlefield. You can also add more than 130 rifles and a military utility truck. That's a vehicle that that we obtained just to use to pull equipment around our shops. To their inventory list, totaling $1.3 million. It certainly saves our taxpayers a lot of money. Um, trying, you know, you, you going through that 1033 program. The 1033 program is a federal program that provides used equipment from the Department of Defense to federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies for free. In the Tampa Bay area alone, $13.9 million of equipment has been given to local law enforcement agencies, according to data 10 investigates obtained from the Department of Defense. That includes 142 rifles at the Mantee County Sheriff's Office, an ambulance, mounted crane, and MRAP at the Pasco County Sheriff's Office, and two armored trucks and two MRAPs for the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. Law enforcement are meant to be peacekeepers. We're not supposed to be soldiers. Retired police Lieutenant Diane Goldstein says there is a place for military style equipment, but it should only be given to agencies that truly have a need for it. It's federal money incentivizing um, a, a culture that then adopts military style um, posturing that doesn't serve the community well. One of the bigger agencies in the Bay Area, the St. Pete Police Department, only has one piece of equipment from the program. And we got a Humvee, which is not armored, so we could do the same thing, so we could put people in that and take them out of the flooded area. Chief Holloway with St. Pete Police says he doesn't plan on getting any other equipment. I can tell the community, as long as I'm chief here, we're not going to be looking at that. Uh, just like I told you, if we're going to buy a piece of equipment, the first thing is, is how is it going to keep our officers safe? The second thing, how is it going to protect our community? Uh, if I cannot explain those two things, then we will not be purchasing those two things. Why was, does an agency small like Highlands County need something like a mine resistant vehicle that is for military style operations for protecting against mine blasts? Sure. What do you say to that? So I, I would say it's a, it's a very good question. Uh, we don't use it. We don't have a lot of mines around here that we need to drive over, but we do use it. Uh, because of its ability to be bulletproof and, and uh, be able to take uh, some pretty significant rounds. Sheriff Blackman says equipment like the MRAP provides his deputies with protection if they are in a situation where they are being fired at. There's are still dents in the armored truck from a standoff a few weeks back. It was also seen pulling up to the bank in Sebring where five people were shot dead. What would you say to people that question that type of gear in that type of protection? Well, I just don't think they understand truly what we use them for. Um, and I would suggest to call their, if their sheriff has them, or not only the sheriffs get them, I, I, police chiefs and mm -hmm. different agencies utilize that equipment, uh, they should call their particular sheriff or police chief and ask, what do you actually use it for and, and educate themselves. This program, by the way, is not new. It was put in place by Congress in the 1990s. Let's take a deeper dive into its history for you. In 2015, President Barack Obama used executive order prohibiting tracked armored vehicles, grenade launchers, and bayonets.
departments had to return them if they had received them in the past. But in 2017, President Trump signed an executive order revoking the order that President Obama had signed. So no longer prohibiting those tracked armored vehicles and bayonets. Grenade launchers, though, they are still not allowed. As of June of this year, there are nearly 8,200 law enforcement agencies from across the U.S. that take part in the program.